Jasper County Airport. Automated weather observation. One, one, two, eight, Zulu, weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero, clear, below, one, two, thousand, temperature, one, eight, Celsius, dew point, one, seven, altimeter, three, zero, one, one. All right, I got the airport right here. It's always just to the right of the Jan uh, Rensselaer. And Jasper County traffic, twin Cessna 466, back four and a half miles to the north, inbound for landing runway 1A, Jasper County. We're in the white arc, so we can throw the gear, throw the flaps, gear in transition. One, two, three greens. And I got the glide slope, or the Vassy, I should say, or Pappy. And Jasper County traffic, twin Cessna, 466 Quebec, three mile final, runway 18, Jasper County. All right, on slope, we'll lower descent here a little bit, stay on slope. Three greens. Jasper County traffic, twin Cessna, four, six, six, back, one mile final, and may one eight, Jasper County. Nice slow landing. Three greens. All right, get a little fresh air. And Jasper County traffic, twin Cessna, four, six, six, spec, clear all runways, Jasper County. Alright, self-serve fuel, just like you're pulling into the gas station or the car. And once we fill up and, and show you this pre-flight procedure, we'll be back. Take care. Alright, good morning everybody again. So I wanted to go through the full pre-flight procedure with you for the 310. 
We're gonna start with our fuel strainer. I use a Gats jar. The Gats jar allows you to put the fuel back into the tanks because it's got a little filter on top, as you can see. So we'll start by going over the main tanks and sumping those. Let me just switch the camera here for you. All right, so the main tank is the tip tank on the 310. And the main sump is right on the bottom here. This little, this little nub right here. So we stick uh, the sump there, push. And you can see our fuel is nice and clear, uh, blue, so no water. Otherwise we get separation like oil and water. The next two sumps are under the wing here for the aux tank. So we'll come over to the aux tank. The first one's right at the back here. Sump that. All right, still nice and blue. And the next one's right near the leaning edge of the wing. Sump that. Still got a nice blue tint. Okay, then we go over to just uh, between the, the cowling and the uh, engine, the left engine, or excuse me, the right engine. And there's two sumps here for the cross feeds. So the cross feeds allow us to bring fuel from the left main tank to the right engine and, and vice versa. So we'll sump that first one. And then there's another one right back here. All right, everything's looking great. And then what we can do is bring all this and put it back into the aux tank here. Just adjust the camera there so you can see the aux tank cap come off. And we pour it out through the filter in the Gats jar here. Voila. Let's put the cap back on and do the other side. So on the other side, we have three fuel straining points. Uh, the two aux again. So we'll start with the rear one, get under the wing here. This one's always a little slow. You can see Yaffe in the background there, just checking things out. Nice and blue. We'll move to the front one. And nice and blue still. And then we'll move over to our main tank. Nice and blue still. Okay, and then we'll throw all this back into the aux tank here. Pour it out through the filter again of the Gats jar. And that's our fuel strained. And that completes that part of the pre-flight. Okay, our next step is to continue with fluids and check the oil. And I will put the camera set up so you can see the dipstick here in a moment uh, while we check the oil. All right, here is our lid for the oil dipstick access. This is standard little Phillips screwdriver pops these up here. And you can see that we have our fill point here and the dipstick here. Engine's a bit hot, so I'm just using a rag to pull this out as we were just running things. Definitely warm to the touch. And we pull the dipstick here and wipe it as it comes out. And we dip it back down in all the way till it clicks. And then pull it out again to check the level. So we are good as we are just running things and everything's hot. So we're gonna put that back in. Clean up any little mess we made here. And then just close this up until these click. And that's it, that's how we check the oil. 
Okay, our next step in the process is to check the three greens on the landing gear lights. The tip tank, um, our main fuel pump transfer tip tank pumps are working and also the stall horn. So to do that, we need to go in the cabin, turn on the master switch and do a walk around. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is we also check the flaps that they're working fully. So let me change the camera here. We'll jump into the cockpit. And we'll flip on the master switch down here. We'll throw the flaps down all the way. You can see we've got three greens on the landing gear light. So that's squat switches are working. Or the gear, the gear lights are working, I should say. And we check that all our flaps are down here. That's good. We can hear the right fuel transfer tank running, or fuel transfer pump running. We come over to the stall horn on the left wing, which is this little tab right here. Touch it. We hear the horn and we hear the left uh, tank running, pump running. All right, we go back into the cockpit. And we bring our flaps up. And then we turn off the master. Okay, for the last part of the pre-flight, we do our walk around and we check a bunch of, a uh, number of things. So let's start with the seg ports. So there's two static ports on the plane. There's one here on the rear right side. That is clear. We don't see any bugs or any clogging in it. Then I start to move my way around the back of the plane, check the, the surfaces are all clear and smooth. So no weird things on the elevator. Check that we've got three static wicks. We do. We also check the elevator movement. It moves freely, no resistance, and there's a counterweight. Same with the tail. Check that we have all our vortex generators as well on the tail. Nothing's missing. And three static wicks as well. And then we come around, we do the same thing on the other side freely, no obstructions, three static wicks on the back end there, and that everything's run your hand on down this nice and smooth on the surfaces. And we do the same thing running up the tail as well. Our other static port is on the back left side, so that's nice and clear. We take a look at the belly on the fuselage here. All of our antennas are here that we normally have. The flaps are all up too, as you can see. So that's good, flaps are working fine. Let me come back over to the back behind the left engine. Take a look at the strut. We've got good pressure in it, good tire pressure. Nothing in the mufflers, no birds nesting in there. It's good. Let me come over to our ailerons. Two static wicks here. Check for free movement moves, no issues, and one static wick on the back of the tip tank. Let me come around to the front of the left wing and again checking for smoothness, no um, unconformities, and all our, all our vert vortex generators are in place, nice and smooth. And then we open up the cowling here, access door. We take a look at the alternator, which is the first thing right here in front of us and check the alternator belt tension. It's good, it's attached. No birds, no other things in here. Close that back up. Okay, and then we check our props. Are they nice and smooth? Just like the wings. All good. I usually would put my hand in here to check for obstructions, but the engine's hot. And then I also kind of give the little nose, uh, the nose cone a little rock just to make sure it's tight, not shimmying at all, that's good. Make sure our air intake is clear here and all our vortex generators are on the inner wing section. 
Then we come to the nose. We check the pitot tube is clear, no obstructions. We check our nose strut, make sure there's pressure in it and our tire is good. And then we also take a look in the nose wheel well here. Again, no obstructions. Move over to the other side here and kind of repeat what we just did on the left-hand side, left engine, left wing, etc. Alternator belt is tight. Button that back up. Check our props. Okay, and then we do the same thing with the right wing. Just check for smoothness, any obstructions. And we come around back. Check our static wake is there. There's one, two, three. And then check our aileron. Free movement. And then check again our strut here for the, the gear and tire pressure and the mufflers, making sure there's no obstructions in there. And that completes our pre-flight. So I hope you learned a lot about the 310 as that part of that pre-flight and uh, let's go fly. All right, so for the hot start, what we do is we put the throttle all the way full And then we hit the start button and a little bit of prime at the same time. And then you see it cranks over and it starts up and bring the throttle back. And so the engine keeps going here. And we'll do the same thing with the right engine. So full throttle with the right. And hit the start button, a little bit of prime and bring the throttle back as it starts up there and hold it. So that's the trick with the IO 550s on a hot start. Not always simple, but um, you gotta catch it that first time, otherwise it's pretty easy to, to flood it and you have to lean the mixture back and go back and forth between mixture lean and rich. All right, so we've got fuel. We went through the pre-flight procedure with you and we just did a hot start. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a run-up together. We haven't done one of those with you before. Um, so I think that might be interesting. And we're just gonna go to the end uh, three six here and do that. Okay, so here's our uh, throttle, throttles, two throttles left, right. Our props, left, right, and our mixture, left, right. Mixture set full. And then down here we have our two starters, our left and our right, with our primer switch. And then our left alternator, right alternator, the master switch. And then the two magnetos for the left engine, and the two magnetos for the right engine. So what we first do is bring up the left engine to 1700 on the RPM. Brakes are set. Right about there. Then we come down, we throw the left alternator off. We check that the failure light comes on, that's correct. We check that the right's taking the load on the ammeter there. Okay, and then we turn the left alternator back on. And the light goes off. We cycle the prop. Twice. And three times. And then we check the alt air intake for the left engine on the top. No RPM loss. And we check the everything's in the green here on the left engine, which it is. And we check our left and right magnetos. I don't know if I remember I did that, so we'll just do it again. And no RPM loss with that. And then we bring it back to idle and we check our suction over there on the right and it stays consistent as well. So that's what we do for a run up. I won't do the right engine with you again, but it's just the same procedure. 
and uh, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit again about the systems there. So we're going to fly back to Lansing now. Really appreciate you watching this video. If you like this video and subscribe to the channel, it would be even greater. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You can also follow Princess Effie as well, who's back here. Show him your face, Eff. Give him a rub. And until our next adventure, we'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching us uh, Between Layers Aviation. I'm Brian.